In the blink of an eye, just fire everywhere. That is the craziest fucking thing I've ever seen. All right, this shit is fucking rad. There's a fire in Shellville, and it's going straight up the middle of a tree. That is the craziest fucking thing I've ever seen. It's hollowed out the tree. Take the red pill. When I first saw the drone footage of these fires in Santa Rosa, California, I started to notice something a little weird. Now, at first, I only looked at the video for a couple of seconds and put it away because I was busy. When I came back to the video to re-examine what I saw, I started to notice some weird things about this video. The drone footage showed houses that were completely burned to the ground and yet they were surrounded by trees that seemed green and lush. I'm not the only one who's been noticing these inconsistencies with these fires. It looks like the houses were placed in a furnace type environment with constant heat applied and everything burned away until the fuel, there was no fuel left to burn. And yet trees around the surrounding properties not even far away, some as close as 16 feet even, and others as close as 5 feet, were slightly charred or damaged, but not completely burned like the houses. Other people have started to make videos about this and showing crazy anomalies about these fires. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go through some of these videos with you. I'm going to try and point out a few other details show you what other people are saying about these fires. These don't look like normal, your, your average wildfire or house fire or structure fire. These, like many other people are saying, and I'm starting to agree, look like they were started by some sort of directed energy weapon. And in this video, I'm going to try and show you the evidence that points to such. So let's take a look at the rest of this footage and we'll examine this together and see what we can come up with. Okay guys, the first video I want to go through with you is this one. Now I know you can't see my mouse, so I won't try pointing with my mouse, but take a look at the car in the foreground of this video. Then look just to the left at the tree, and then look left of the tree to the house. You can see the house burned down to the ground. You can see this car is burned out and the paint job looks like it was somehow sandblasted or burnt off somehow. And if you look at the wheels, you can see that the alloy rims have melted away and run away from the car down on the ground there. That's what those little white spots are you see. Now take particular note of the tree. The tree itself did not burn except that it has evidence of radiant heat damage. If you look on the left, you can see the char marks from radiant heat which probably came off of the house that burned down. If you look at the right hand side of that tree, you can see just that short little char mark that shows evidence of radiant heat which affected it from the burnout of the car next to it. And then you have those tree limbs laying on top of that car. Now, if the car was so hot that it burned out the interior and it melted the alloy rims, you have to ask yourself, why is the wood not burned? Okay, so let's, uh, let's take a look at this video and then what I'll do is I'll interject where I can um, to give you a little more insight on to on, on in into the 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 radiant heat effects here Th this this was definitely a directed energy weapon that caused these fires and it was tuned it's 
It's tuned to certain materials, just like in the 9-11 slab when we saw the Twin Towers come down. It's turning out to, to look like that Dr. Judy Wood was correct in her assumptions about directed energy weapons. Let's take a look at this video and get started. But then it wouldn't even fuel to spread all the way over to this car. You don't see no char marks on the asphalt or the concrete. The tree is still intact, but yet this car is completely destroyed. This tree would have, wouldn't even be there. And you would see char marks from here to the, from the flattened house to over to here. It would have completely burned a tree down in the process of destroying a car in such a manner. Alright, let's move on. Uh, let me uh, make it full screen. See the flattened houses. The only thing is that is left are, are steel objects. Looks like you know, a couple of refrigerators, maybe a washer and a dryer. Let's move. Now look at the trees here. Look at the difference. The trees that were just outside of the house fires, they still have their leaves. They're not really affected. The trees that were in closer to the house fires, they were charred, and they lost their leaves. But if this heat was so intense that it would have taken the house down, why did it not take out the trees on the outside there? They're relatively close to that heat. They should have caught fire. Let's keep looking. On. Once again, we can see a car almost completely destroyed, sandblasted outside, destroyed inside, missing rims, missing glass, tree still intact, no char marks on the concrete. Again, you have a tree in between a house that burned down and a car that burned out. Why didn't the tree burn down from all that intense heat? Ask yourself that question. Let's move on. Look at this vehicle. Here, even before he gets to the vehicle, look at this tree. Okay? The trunk is intact, but the top is charred. What? What, what would cause that in a natural fire? The trailer was sandblasted. Tree still intact. Now this damage, you would say it was probably caused from this event. Because the paint job looks, you know, like a fairly decent paint job. And I, you know, it just doesn't seem like it, you know, it could have been like this before, you know, whatever happened, happened. It looks to me like this car was just outside of the finger or the footprint of the uh, directed energy laser beam or whatever beam it was, the microwave beam. So it wasn't really affected. Apparently the trailer was. It's, there's just some weird anomalous effects going on with these fires. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Right, let's move on. And look, did you notice that as we passed that motorcycle, the grass was burned out. But look at the tree up here in the top right corner, the little brush. It's, it's, it's fairly green and lush. What the uh, what? <laughs> what? Look at that. Burn asphalt. In the middle of nowhere. Let's move on.
four in a row. Cars sandblasted on the outside, completely destroyed on the inside, missing rims and glass, trees intact. Same MO. And you can see this vehicle is missing the the, the you know the back of it. Now maybe that was made of a, a, a different material. Again, look at the trees. You can see the charring on the other side. That house was burned out. These cars were burned out, but the trees, for some reason, are intact. No charring on this side. Looks like these trees were just far enough away from these cars not to be affected by the radiant heat. Strange? I think so. Let's move on. Oh, what's up with that tree? Look at this. Back up. Look at that tree right there in the center of the top, top center of the frame. There's nothing there. That mailbox was burned off. That tree is burned out. But everything around it, what, what affected that, you know? And yet, here these cars are burned out, and their trees next to them aren't even affected. These results are inconsistent with the real, or with the natural fire. Fence no still standing. Back. You saw that fence still standing. Now I'm just going to let this play for a little while. And you can so you can analyze. See the aluminum, the alloy melted away from the rims, dripping down the side of the driveways. Those alloys burn at much hotter temperatures than house fires. These were concentrated beams of heat that were sent down via either satellite or aerial vehicles. Plus on top of that, the geoengineering has been dumping aluminum and barium and strontium down into these uh, areas for years. Aluminum, when you put it in a microwave, it sparks and it arcs. Barium... Another car in the middle of nowhere. Barium absorbs radiation. That gives a great combination for fire accelerants. So if this stuff was nano-coated with aluminum, with nano-aluminum and nano-barium, then it was real easy for these objects to not only just absorb the radiation, but to concentrate the heat in order to cause these fires and the temperatures required to melt out these tires and burn down these houses without even touching the surrounding vegetation, barely. So you can see the heat was concentrated on objects. It wasn't a normal wildfire where the heat is spread everywhere and everything burns. Not everything burned. No char marks on this guardrail. We have both of these vehicles. Sand blasted on the outside, completely destroyed on the inside. explain the idea that I have of how directed energy weapons work or whatever they use some type of an exotic weapon all right you know so you have to ask yourself okay this weapon targeted at all the wood in the house but yet this tree is intact okay well, we'll look at it this way every house every wall stud, every floor joist and ceiling joist, they all have nails or screws in them, which are made of some type of steel. Now this weapon, now this is just an idea I have, I really don't have any idea. I'm just going by what I see and how I think it would work. Now it has a seeking frequency, we'll just use the word frequency, you know, for lack of a better term. Okay, this seeking frequency seeks out a certain material. In this case, it'll be steel, the nails and the screws. Then it has, you know, maybe a handful, you know, of destructive frequencies. Now, the destructive frequencies seek out a certain material. 
you know, and then it just turns the material to dust. And and these destruction frequencies follow the seeking seeking frequencies to the target. And then the field of this destruction goes beyond the target. You know, probably out into to the middle of the road. I'm, I'm just making a guess. So what happened? The house was completely flattened. It's a good theory he's coming up with. Pay close attention. The field spread beyond this vehicle. It skipped a tree because there's no steel in a tree. That's a good point. So maybe the trees either shed the barium and aluminum or maybe he's dead on with his theory about the frequencies seeking out the metals to heat them up and cause the fires. But the car is made of steel. There's a lot of steel in the car. So then it decided, there's my next target. So it destroyed the car. Sandblasted outside, completely destroyed inside. Missing glass, no rims. So that's how I think it works. Now, I could be wrong. You know, it's just my idea. This, this definitely was not a natural you know, fire caused by natural, you know, caused by a natural reason. Some type of destructive weapon. All right. Now I'm just, I'm gonna let you watch the rest of the video. I might comment, I might not. This is a really good video. Very nice. Whoever took it did a very, very good job. All right, let's move on. Look at that. Melted asphalt. No path to the destruction, to the heat. You know, that normal fire. You know, a normal fire, you know, there's no fuel. Let's move on. What would cause the asphalt to burn out like that unless maybe there was metal underneath there? which attracted the frequency. You know, as you can see, every vehicle is destroyed in the same exact manner. Fires don't work that way, natural fires. This is consistent with the footage from a plain truth.info, his videos, which I'm going to put one of them in here for a short while, and the also the one from the uh, Portugal fires. Let's keep watching this first. Must have been a mailbox. You can see the charred sidewalk, but there's no path to this, whatever was, you know, whatever was destroyed. Just out, you know, just out in the middle of nowhere. All right, let's move on. And this video is nine minutes and 13 seconds long. I'll just play to the end. An awesome video. Download this video and analyze it for yourself.
Now, you know, for those that can see, will know exactly what I'm talking about. The ones that cannot see will just come up with any excuse that goes along with their brainwashing to dismiss such discrepancies. It's really hard, you know, to try to tell the sleepers, you know, to try to give them this information. No matter how much information, data, proof that you provide, their brainwashing, you know, goes into effect and it doesn't He's right about that. Facts don't seem to change people's minds. You have to almost, if you're going to wake the sheep, you almost have to get them into an emotional response state so that they can wake up. It's crazy how the brainwashing has taken effect. I don't allow them to think outside of their brainwash. It gets kind of frustrating sometimes. But you can see it. Flattened houses, completely destroyed houses, no fuel path to the destroyed, you know, destroyed vehicles. Oddly split tree, street signs intact. The seeker frequency found the street sign, but there were no destructive materials it's made out of steel. So it, 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 it ignored all the street signs. Another mi missing back. Odd char mark in the middle of the road. This is this just defies all logic. Odd char, more odd charring. Street sign intact. And here, the final example. Another vehicle out in the middle of nowhere. No char marks, no tree, no fuel to burn from the flattened houses from here over to here. Trees intact, these trees would be completely gone. It would be nothing but ash if the fire travel from here to here. And if you don't find, you know, that there's something wrong with this story, I just don't know what to say. Um, I want to play the rest of the video. And I probably won't comment on any more of it. You know, watch it. I probably won't comment on any more of it. Okay, so that's enough of that video. Um, I'm going to put in the other few videos and a few other commentaries that I have created. This, this needs to go far and wide. People need to share this. People need to start understanding these aren't regular house fires or wildfires. This is some sort of directed energy attack. This is obvious to those of us who've been studying this for a while. Um, let's take a look at the next, uh, the next batch of videos here. I've just got something to say about this article here. State to fire victims, don't move debris or ashes. If you look down here, it says, the county on Saturday afternoon urged people going back into the burn zone not to try to clean up or move ash uh, around your house. It could be dangerous and costly. The state of California's Cal Recycle Program will be coming to the area to do rubbish and ash removal. If the residents begin doing it on their own, Cal Recycle won't touch their property and they will end up paying thousands of dollars to clean up what are, in essence, hazardous sites. Now, why do they want to come in and clean up the sites on their own, calling them hazardous? 
Weren't these just regular fires? Or maybe it's a chemical fire. With all that aluminum and barium being rained down on California with the geoengineering programs, how is this going to affect this fire area? Well, you've seen how the areas were burned out, houses were burned out, but nothing else is burned. The trees are still standing, as you can see in this picture here in the top left. Here's a little something you may not know. I looked up Cal Recycle, okay, and I found their homepage. It's a government organization. I think what they intend to do is to come in and just like in 9-11, remove all the evidence before anyone can figure out what happened. So I'm saying, if you live in California, you need to get to your home site as quickly as possible and test the ash or get some samples to bring out and be tested and find out what you can find in the ash because you may find some damning test results that give you answers to what exactly caused these fires. Just saying. Hey folks, welcome to another video from a plain truth info. Well, this dovetails with yesterday's piece I did uh, chronicling about uh, how water, weather is being generated to create uh, uh, the environment so we can have cooling off so the earth does not just completely heat up. And here we see a fire from Fort McMurray that happened uh, last year in August that started as a one kilometer fire and grew into a, a, a two month long fire evacuations. But more clearly, this uh, channel Truth has come out and is starting to question what type of fire. And if you take a look at this picture right here, here's a bedroom community that was devastated. But look at the devastation. The trees are still up. There's still life around, except the homes are devastated like a directed energy weapon. And this is the question I'm asking. Did they use a directed energy weapons to start the fires and continue the fires going on in Fort McMurray? And there was also another fire up in Canada. This was August of last year. Um, and look at this house here. One house gets absolutely pulverized and destroyed and the, the next house next to it is completely fine and we see this time and time again. Cars are absolutely incinerated but look in the back there's a wooden fence still standing. How can that be? And it seems like these, uh, the, as, as Truth uh, documents here in a little bit, that they came out of the weather came out of nowhere and I, I'll do the timeline and show it was a complete surprise to the fire departments and kept growing. Here we see absolute devastation, but then we see trees. This was in May. It was 86 degrees in May in Canada, folks. Look at the inside of this car. Doesn't this remind you of 9-11 when cars were charred outside of the 9-11 buildings? Look at this house right next to an absolute devastation, but the other house is still perfect. This is what I mean. So first, let's look at the timeline of how this fire started, and then we'll get into a little more about what happened. Let's go over uh, quickly the timeline of the Fort McMurray wildfire and you get an idea of what happened and how fast this thing just absolutely exploded. And they do use the word exploded here. So May 1st, May Day, right? May 1st, part of the Satanic Cults Rituals Day of Spring. A fire starts in a remote part of the forest southwest of Fort McMurray. Investigators don't know how it started, but note that most spring wildfires are caused by people. Trees are still greening, making lots of fuel. Well, it just finished winter, folks. It's in Canada. There's snow. It's cold. It shouldn't be fire starting in May. Fort McMurray's Gregor neighborhood is prepared to evacuate on short notice. So the fire began May 1st. At that night, they're beginning evacuations. Local state of emergency, mandatory evacuation for Gregoire. Uh, aircraft the next day the fire is one square kilometer one square kilometer in size we are hopeful that we can stop this fire before it gets into town said chief darby allen all things look good said mayor melissa blake overnight fire grows 26 kilometers okay so it was 10 growing or one square kilometer growing to 26 kilometers everything's normal fine all right a change in normal temp atmosphere temperature is called an inversion breaks this coupled with temperatures in the range of 30 degrees centigrade or 86 degrees Fahrenheit in May in Canada, Alberta, low humidity and shifting winds caused the fire to explode. Totally unexpected by these guys. They thought it had a control. One square kilometer. Now it's exploding. There's shock at how quickly the situation has deteriorated. When I got out of the shower earlier today, the sky was blue. When I got out, it was black. 
A little later, a half hour later, there's chaos in the city south side as people flee towering walls of orange flames that are charging into neighborhoods. Remember, these guys thought that it looks good. All things look good just a day before, two days before. All of Fort McMurray is placed under a mandatory evacuation order. Emergency officials say whole neighborhoods have been destroyed in two days, folks. Cars the next morning. Cars are strung along ditches and police are running jerry cans of gasoline to drivers who have run out trying to escape the fire. To the north of the city, thousands have taken refuge in oil sands work camps. This is the fracking capital of the world. Alberta government declares a provincial state emergency, so it's a provincial, their province, their state, it can control the response. The fire has ballooned to 850 square kilometers. Next, that, that was May 5th. May 6th, 1,560 kilometers. 2,000 kilometers. It's out of control. It's gotten from one square kilometer. Look at what's happened. It says 24 building, 100 buildings were lost. Uh, they're working together to restart the oil lands project because business has to get going, right, right? Now, notice this. This is like, this started May 1, and now this is May 16th on the timeline. This is very important. Notley, sa Notley says the air quality in Fort McMurray is at dangerous levels and is hampering efforts to get the residents back to their homes. The air quality health index scale is normally 1 to 10, with 10 being the worst. But the reading that morning was 38. 38, over 300% greater than their highest scale of the health index goes up to. What is in this stuff, people? Why is this happening a week and a half or more after the event in the air? What's hanging around? The Alberta government says people could return to start homes on June 1st if the conditions are safe. It has now scorched 3,500 square kilometers as conditions remain dry and windy. So now on May 20th, uh, 19 days after it started, conditions have improved enough for the province to bring an extra 1,000 firefighters over the next two weeks to try and gain an upper hand. It's still out of control. They still don't have control of it some three weeks after it started. Finally, July 4th. Months later, the fire is classified under control. So let's look at the pictures again. You know, I just want you to take a peek at some of these. See, it's all charred. And even if the whole house is totaled, you know, you still have debris. You still have some wood, even if the house burned, burned, burned. You know. So I just want you to take a couple minutes just to look at this stuff with me okay see how the outline of the house still pretty much stands but it's all black i mean that's the one thing about a house fire is that it's all everything's black and well this is the stuff that they spray on it see this is what they put the fire out with but the house itself is black and this car still has its wheels it's black it's got its windows dark gray smoke in a forest fire okay Black smoke in a forest fire. Now, okay, well, I'm comparing it to 9-11, so that's the point, is that these fires are white. This is Alberta, Canada. This was a big, huge fire they had a couple years ago or last year. And I just want you to notice that the fires are white. The smoke is white. This is Alberta. And I mean, look at this. Look at how white the smoke is. Smoke should look very familiar to us. We've seen this. Okay. We've seen this grayish white smoke. Now, this is where it starts getting creepier. After the damage I just showed you of what a normal house fire looks like, take a look at these pictures. Here is well, I'll just, I'll just keep scrolling through. Look at this. Where, where is everything? Where's, where's, the, where's the black? Where's the, where's the materials that were here? Where are the granite countertops and the bathtubs? Where are they? Where are the materials of these houses? There's absolutely nothing here. There's nothing here, and the trees are still, the trees' trunks are still here. 
But these things are, are, there's no frame. There's no frame to these. This just doesn't make any sense. Where's the glass? Where is the glass for this thing? Do you know what temperature glass melts at? Glass melts at 2400 degrees Fahrenheit. Now look at this. Tell me where this fire entered. Where, where did this fire come from? It's green around here. Maybe it came from here, but I don't know. I, I just, I, this, this is, it doesn't make sense. It's all white. Where's the glass for these cars? None of these cars have any glass. And look at the wheels. See the bottom of the wheels here? I'm going to show you in a minute. In a minute. When these tires melt, when cars catch on fire and the tires melt, they have these like copper wires. And there's no wheels. And they just, they just are all fried. But now look at this. You can see the goop down here from, there's like, there's stuff down here. But now look here. Here we have twisted metal which is also from something we experienced in 9-11, isn't it? See this twisted metal? These are, this is a big I-beam. You know? Because it doesn't make any sense how this fire burned. These trees weren't burned. So this wasn't a forest fire. You can see it burned through here. But these trees are fine. How did it cross the street? How did it get through here? This is an island. This is like a little court. Island. So, so where is this fire coming from? None of this makes any sense. So let me just show you some more pictures. Look at this. This is crazy. There is like nothing here. And it's all white. Everything here is white. I, I just, I don't know. It just reminded me of this. This is what it reminds me of. It's like the same debris field or, or lack thereof. You know, I mean, you want to tell me every granite countertop and, and all the windows and all the structures, because it, it must have moved through so fast. So, okay, so it moved through fast. So these, some of the structures should still be here. There's just a couple of pieces of brick. And look at this. It, it went across the street and it missed this house and missed this house and burned everything but the trees. I mean, this is just, this, I don't think, I don't know why anybody hasn't looked at this. But look at this mess. Where's, where's the property? Where's, I mean, where's the, where's the material that was in these houses? You, you mean to tell me the entire structure of the building went down in these little, these little pieces of trees didn't? And, and see, now where's the trail of the fire? You have this wall of green here. This didn't catch on fire. And this didn't catch on fire. So where's it coming from? This didn't catch on fire. Where did it come from? They I mean, these houses have nothing left in them. They're just flattened. And look at this. This one. How did this one catch on fire? What did the heck did? I mean, this just these just these pictures. They don't make any sense to me. And and then this has been bugging me for a while. Look at this. What the hell happened there? Look at this. This looks like the inside of the World Trade Center, what was left of it. How did this happen? This house was like d d deteriorated. So that was the uh, directed energy weapons possibly being used in Alberta, Canada fires, also with the aluminum used with geoengineering over decades. That's certainly helping spark the fires, but it sure looked like that thing was combusted and directed energy and just pulverized. Uh, concrete and just blasted everything in its place all right so in closing I just want to uh, I've been kind of taking a task geoengineering watch the uh, uh, research leader in geoengineering here and I don't know what they're posting these days uh, this yet the other day's post geoengineering is now causing lethal UV radiation exposure now I followed mr. Wigginton when he talked about UVBs levels and the intensity of the Sun being because of UVB he brought out the instruments and he showed testing UVA and UVB subtracted UVB from UVA and showed that it was over a thousand percent above the U, what's being reported by the EPA as far as UVB levels they were reporting I think five percent total so with another meter so we'll turn the sensor again toward the Sun this measurement you see here is a combination of UVA and UVB combined end up with about 60 percent 
of the total incoming UV is UVB. And that's simply off the charts. So that's our UVA measurement. Now we're going to measure UVA and UVB and we'll subtract the UVA measurement from that. But now Mr. Wigginton is coming out and saying the ultimate killer UVC spectrum is now in play. But I'm very questioning his scientific approach to this statement. All official UV monitoring sources tell us that lethal UVC radiation from the sun is stopped up at 100,000 feet in the air. So Geoengineering Watch has a source. This source is a NASA aeronautics engineer, a veteran of 40 years in the field of atmospheric study and ozone depletion, who is doing his best to sound the alarm. Take my word for it, 40 year NASA employee, can't tell you about the guy. So here's where I get into the misdirection that this really bothers me with what he's doing here. Many mainstream sources confirm ozone damage will occur. Many mainstream sources confirm ozone damage will occur. So he provides a lot of links and when you go to these links, uh, this is from Think Progress. Geoengineering scheme damages the ozone layer back from 2008. So it's a scheme damaging the ozone layer. But folks, show me where it says what he just said about uh, you know, UVB. And this is the whole article here. It doesn't confirm what he was just stating was confirmation of his statement here in this article. Getting right back to it. I mean, mainstream sources confirm ozone damage will occur from geoengineering. And this is the article you're citing. This isn't confirmation. They say it's a scheme, it's written kind of a puff piece back in 2008. Sorry, not confirmation. That is not a link that confirms what you're saying here, Mr. Wigginton. All right, so going on, this UVC is going to kill us all, it looks like now, a new, new thing. So he's saying our NASA engineer colleague, it's the severity of UVC radiation exposure is crystal clear. The chart was kept as basic as possible. Note the baseline is set at one for UVC levels because they don't recognize it. All official UV monitoring sources officially deny the ongoing climate engineering. All right, so here's the chart that he and his NASA engineer of 40 years made up. Uh, my fifth grade son could make this chart, folks. Where's the time dates? Where's the measurement apparatuses? Where's the testing measurements used? Now we find out the UVC radiation reading on the chart was taken on 1117. So here he's had all this deadly radiation information from this chart from 1117 from his 40 year NASA insider and he's releasing it now. Ongoing measurements are in a similar range. Take my word for it. Uh, he's not doing any proof. Well, here we have we have a chart. So this is from August 5th, just the other day, reveals the increasing spikes of ever more lethal UV radiation. Now this is made up by, I assume, Mr. Wigginton at Geoengineering Watch, since he's the lead researcher there, and they're in nanometers, and what does this show us? Nothing. It shows August 5th spikes of what time frame? What are these numbers? I mean, what does this mean? It, it, it just makes no sense that he's trying to make his case that all of a sudden he's coming out and saying UVC is here and it's going to kill us all. And then he throws in a bunch of quotes that UVC doesn't exist, and he talks about a bunch of fires going on. <laughs> But he never makes the case about UVC. He just talks about this NASA engineer that must remain anonymous. Take my word for it, folks. Take my word for it. Sorry, Mr. Wigginton, I need the proof. Uh, if you want the proof, sir, maybe I can help you. Here you can go over for $142, and you could buy your own UVC me meter and measure for yourself and prove to us the UVC is off the charts as you are claiming with these innocuous charts that are just made up by your anonymous NASA engineer and yourself. And then you show us, like you did with the UVB, how this is true. All right? I'd love to see it. But your scientific uh, meaning, uh, scientific uh, proof here is, is failing miserably here, sir. So that's all I got for today. There's a plain truth out. We'll catch you on the next video. Hey guys, it's 11.30 a.m. on October 10th, 2017, and I just want to go over some basic facts with you guys about fires. The average house fire burns at a temperature of about 1,100 degrees Fahrenheit, which isn't hot enough to destroy most metals and earthly made substances. And if an item is well placed and small in size, its chances of survival increase drastically. Let's take a look at the burning point of a couple of materials. Glass burns at around 20, 2,600 to 2,900 degrees Fahrenheit, which is more than double the regular temperature of house fires or forest fires. And let's see what we can find out about aluminum. Aluminum melts at around 1,220 degrees. Some alloys burn a little bit hotter. 
uh, around 1900 degrees. Now let's take a look at what the National Institute of Fire Safety and Safety Training say what will not generally burn in a house fire. Jewelry, because it's metal. Silver coins, because they're metal. Filing cabinets, steel cabinets, steel filing cabinets are built to last so that businesses won't have to deal with the loss of important files after building fires. Many people keep personal documents in filing cabinets, which are often kept in, ho in home offices. And it says here that uh, mil me silver burns around 1,800 degrees Fahrenheit. Let's go down to barbecue grills, cookware, some appliances, stone table, fire safes. Um, let's see, it says here about tools. Because the melting point of carbon steel is between 2,600 and 28 degrees Fahrenheit. And the melting point of stainless steel is roughly 2,700 degrees. So you're not going to see your barbecues melt. You're not going to see your ovens and your uh, most of your appliances. They're not going to melt. They'll be burned, they'll be damaged, but they're not going to melt. It's common to find an appliance or two that remains intact. There's chaos around there, but many appliances these days are made with stainless steel, which gives them a sleek and design durability. So a lot of people have these things, but the metal, the frame itself of these things is not going to melt. So let's take a peek in, at what happened here. Well, let me just show you some pictures here of normal house fires, what, what's usually left afterwards. There's a bunch of rubble and everything's black. Usually, usually the frames of the buildings stand. And there's a bunch of crap around the trees or in, you know, around the place, buildings. This, the frame of the building stays intact. The, the entire building does not disappear. There's still debris. There's a huge debris field after these things. You see there's like gutters and stuff. And the wood, even though it does burn, it doesn't totally burn. Now this is white stuff from what they put the fire out with. But, but generally you see that all of these houses, every one of them is black. Now this, this car was right next to a fire and it still has glass. Its wheels are still intact. It was actually, this thing actually burned, but it didn't melt the tires. It didn't melt the glass of the vehicle. You see all the rubble? This is just rubble because these pl these places implode. They, I mean, the, after the, the structure falls apart, it collapses, but you still see they're all singed. They're all black. And even in the forest fires, the, the trees themselves are still black. And you can see, you know, you have bricks on the bottom and not all the aluminum siding or, or, or vinyl siding melts. Look at these, these, the structure, the outward frame of the, of, the, of the houses still stands. But that's not what we see in these crazy forest fires. The entire things just disappear. And there's, there's very little explanation for it. Now this was in... This was a USA something wildfires. So this is this is a new trend we're seeing where the entire building just disappears. There's absolutely nothing left, and that's what we're seeing again here in this. In this, and uh, this is becoming a growing trend, guys. There's no explanation for it. I want to show you a couple of things here that should really should should be visible to the people with eyes to see. Here's the build. Here's this neighborhood before. And I want you to look, you guys, there's absolutely nothing left. You don't see any part of any of the structures anywhere. This isn't possible. There's something else going on here. Something else going on here. The entire, entire building. Everything, everything's gone but the trees. Now I want you to notice here that there's absolutely nothing of the structures left, not one of them. The trees are still here. That There's a debris, but very, very little debris. Where's the stuff that was in all these houses? Where's the stuff? Where, where's the roofs? Where's the, where's the brick? Where's the, where's the granite countertops? Where's, where's the appliances? Where is everything? How come only the trees are standing? This is just not right. And then look at the fires that are still burning here. Look at these fires. These look awfully familiar, don't they? Let's take a peek because Dr. Judy Woods has spoken about these be 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 before. Other things about the weird fires. I can't call them regular fire because I don't know that. The weird fire just to note that it's not something that you know for sure what it is. It's glowing, but the paper doesn't seem to burn. 
if this was glowing because it's hot, it'd have to be at least, you know, 1,200 degrees centigrade. Aluminum melts at a little over 600 degrees centigrade. It's not a puddle. This aluminum is not a puddle. So what she's saying is that this is a certain color, and flames reach this color at a certain temperature. But the fact that it's glowing that color and the aluminum isn't melting tells you there's something else going on here. And if you guys have ever seen a Dura log, that's what this reminds me of. How, how, like, if you've ever burned a Dura log in a fireplace and poke your fire poker into it, you realize these things just kind of break into a million pieces and they continue to glow. They're not actually still on fire and they're hot, but they're not the same kind of flame that you get out of, out of, a, out of a piece of wood. There's something significantly different about the composition of a Duralog. And these things all seem to be burning like Duralogs. It's a complete and absolute burn. There's nothing left of a Duralog afterwards. And that's what we're seeing in these fires. Now, I'm not saying everybody built their houses at Duralogs, but there's something really messed up going on here. Puddle, so uh, how hot can it be? And this igloo cooler and the plastic trash can are not melted. The paper is not burned either on the ground. So what is that color? And another weird thing about this, right across the street over here is Burger King. And inside they're flipping burgers, cooking burgers for the firefighters, not serving to the customers. But, and then the building across the street was missing. It's just a weird sight. Now this van is also interesting that, you know, you get all this, this something looks like it's on fire, Weird fires there. This van down here has a fire on the side of it. What's burning? And if you see falling debris that was on fire hit these vehicles, why didn't it hit anything else? And how's it you know, under the vehicle? It's just very strange. And we're going to see this here in just a second. I'm going to keep playing this video over here so you guys can see that that's exactly what we see here. Watch this. Notice that these, look at, see how they're all just kind of burning, like, I don't know what, and these cars, I'm going to back up here, these cars are all smashed. They have no glass, they're all smashed. Watch this. All of these, they're like smashed to hell. Look at this, and what's the heck, what the heck is this? What, what's going on here? How did this car all catch on fire? It's got no glass, it's, it's all destroyed, and, and what is this beam? Look at this. Look at this. The car looks like it's been run over. You know, what is this? What is, what is burning here? What is burning here? This is the exact same thing we saw on September 11th, you guys. There's something very messed up here. You know, with September 11th, one of the most suspicious variables was that there was nothing but dust. The, 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 Dr. Judy Woods describes it, as she saw it, as being dustified. Things just disappeared. It looked like they caught on fire in some parts of the building, but, but you see this billowing grayish white smoke and if you guys look at the long distance photos of these pictures you're going to see that's exactly what we see is the exact same kind of smoke i'll do another video on that i don't have those queued up right now but here's the point look at this what is burning here what is burning here because you're going to see that there's twigs all over the place there are twigs everywhere the twigs didn't burn but yet the entire building the, there's nothing left of these houses come on this is just very weird this shouldn't be this way some of these are pines. You guys, let me, let me just point out, some of these are pine trees. Pine trees are so flammable that you, you light a cigarette too close to them and they go, shoop. These still have needles on them. How is it possible that the houses in between pine trees could ignite to desolation, so to absolute be dustified, and the pine trees in between them stay stay. stay intact. I can't offer explanations to this, but I can tell you that there's a recycling bin. This is a plastic recycling bin um, in between a car that is completely fried and all these houses, and there's a recycling bin that did not melt. There's something very unusual going on here. This is not normal. This is very scary. Look at this. Where is all the, the stuff Where's all the glass that, that constituted this building and the materials?
Where's all the glass? Yep. Toasted. He's right. It looks toasted. Look at this. There is this, the, whatever, whatever com, whatever comprised the structural integrity of this building is entirely disintegrated. It's gone, you guys. It's gone. Whatever held this building up is gone. There's rubble, but this looks more like a bomb. Now I want you to look. If this was a fire, why didn't this burn? This is this is this looks like something I would break up and put on top of one of my bonfires here. I would use this in my in my fire pit. What is it? It's just a, it's like a tree. It's tree branches. This is, this is kindling. How come the kindling didn't burn, but the entire structural integrity and the glass is gone? I'm so happy the football field didn't even get touched. Now that's what we're teaching our children. I want you to hear what this kid said. I'm going to play it one more time. This is a frightening observation this kid made. I'm so happy the football field didn't even get touched. He's so happy the football field didn't get touched, but yet the entire ent the entire structural integrity of his entire high school is disintegrated, and he's more concerned about the football field. I know that probably brings him great comfort, and it's probably the only place of normalcy. So to that extent, but I just want you guys to realize what, what we're doing with our children. <laughs> this is what they're thinking. I don't know. They gotta at least clean it up first. God bless this child and his family. You guys, what has happened here? This was a boat. Here's a boat and a trailer hitch. Let's just take a peek back one more time. I'm just realizing what this thing is. This is a boat trailer. This is the hull of a boat. I wondered what this was. That is the hull of a boat, folks. Look at this car. It's like bent in half. The frame of this car is like bent in half. And yet, look at these trees are still standing. Every tree around here, every tree, every shrub, every bush is still standing. There's no way, there is no way that this is normal, folks. What is this? This is the shape, this is the frame of something. These were homes. Where are the toilets? Where are the, where's the glass? Where's the metal? Where's the structural frame? Let's, let's just back up here and take one more peek at these pictures because this is worth noting, guys. I want you to look at what normally remains standing after house fires, okay? Look at this. This is the kind of stuff we should see. And then the rubble for where everything fell down. It's one thing if, if the building burns and then all the crap collapses. That makes sense. This makes sense. See? These, these, this makes sense. Because everything doesn't come to a complete, absolute, perfect, 100% burn. Everything doesn't burn. Especially the cars. The windows still stay intact. The, 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 I mean, the cars do catch on fire in house fires. But look at this. There's still structure here. This is important to notice. That these structures are, even though they're bent and charred, and even if this fell over, you would still have all this rubble of black crap. See? This is like the, this was like their, you know, this probably was attached right here. And as this burned out from underneath it, this fell. You would expect this. This is how, this is, you, these things and these fires, you look at this and this stuff makes sense. It makes sense that this kind of crap is going to fall and it's going to be all charred. You know, this is the charring that we expect. And then these pieces fall over. This is normal. This is what happens in a forest fire. Look at, or I mean, a house fire. And see, this is what happens. Let's keep going and see what we see here. Because we don't see any of that here. We don't see any of the structure of these buildings. Let's just back up here and take a peek. I'm not going to go through this whole thing with you. But you don't see any of the structure left of these buildings. Not even, not even a teeny bit. There you see one washing machine. One washing machine. But where are the granite countertops? Where are the glass doors? Where's any of the metal framing? Where's the bricks? Where's any of the stuff that held these houses together? And why isn't there any rubble? But the tree is still standing. And the, and the grasses are still here. But the cars that were left have no glass. They're all smashed to pieces.
Look at this, the garbage cans. Come on, guys, all the garbage cans are here, but look at the cars. Look at the condition of these vehicles. Look at this. This is all smashed and bent. And look at the twigs on the ground. These things should have caught on fire. How come there's how come there's pine needles and stuff all in the path? Right where a trees where where how where cars are just completely toasted. My gosh, you guys, look at this. These are all like this looks like a bomb went off. This is just this is like shrapnel of of, of a tree that exploded. Where's the, where's the people's lawns? Here's a, here are some appliances. Look at that. We've got a, we've got a dishwasher, or no, and a dishwasher, a washing machine here. But that's it. That's all you can see. And look at this vehicle. Would you just look at this vehicle? Oh gosh, I keep touching it. I'm sorry. There. Look at this vehicle. These vehicles are all destroyed. Look at this. What is this? What is this? All these vehicles are just. They have absolutely no glass in them. They're all just destroyed. Where's the house? Where did these houses go? Why isn't there anything standing whatsoever but the trees? This is supposed to be a forest fire. How come the forest didn't catch on fire? Not even the tree branches. Look at there's just twigs and stuff everywhere. Why did the twigs not burn? But every single solitary piece of two by four that built these houses is standing. I mean, isn't standing, is gone. It's all disappeared. There's no aluminum siding. There's no bricks. There's nothing. Look at this. This car is trashed. It's smashed. It's bent. This frame of this car. Look at this. It's bent. This car, this this is a blazer, you guys, or something like that. And it's it's bent. Look at this. This this stuff is still standing. The trees are still standing. Where's the buildings? Where did the buildings go? Where are the granite countertops? Where's where's any of the furniture? Where's the building? This was somebody's house, guys. Didn't didn't anything survive? You mean the coils of the bed, the mattresses didn't survive? Where is any of this stuff? People lived here. This was their contents of their entire house. How can it all be gone? I gotta slow this down. This is this is ridiculous. I, I can't believe this. It's just what we're looking at, and it's like this is real. At least people, I mean, I know it's real. It really happened, but what is this? Look at this. Where is this house? Where's any of the stuff? Because they left their garbage cans out, and their garbage cans are fine. The trees are still fine. So where did all the stuff inside the buildings go? Look at this a plastic, this is a plastic mailbox, people. How can the plastic mailbox still be standing? These are wood posts. And why is everything so white? This is just totally not normal, you guys. This is totally not normal. I'm trying not to get upset about this, but my gosh, where's their house? Where are any of their houses? Look at this. This is, what is this? This isn't even burned. This just fell, and everything underneath is just disintegrated and gone. You guys, we got to ask serious questions. This looks like, a, 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 these, are, these are some sort of weapon. This is like a bomb of some sort. This is like a disintegration bomb. I mean, it's like, look at them. There's still little rubbles of fire burning. Why aren't the trees on fire still? What is going on here? Look at this. There's no glass in any of these. And the doors are open. All the paint, everything's smashed. What is this? Where's all the stuff? How is this possible? What is burning here? What is smoldering? What is this? How come these shrubs didn't burn? What? Look at this. What is this? Why are the pine needles? You guys, this is a pine tree. How is it possible that a pine tree did not go up in flames? That's easier to burn than paper, people. Look at this. I just, I, I can't, I, 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 my mind is blown. All I can tell you, people, is that we have to start using our eyes and our heads. For the people who can see... I guess here's the objective of me doing this video, and I'm going to turn it off now. The objective of me doing this video is to confirm to the people with eyes to see that we are seeing as messed up as what we're seeing. I'm not going to convince anybody who can't see this. 
but people with eyes to see can see that there's something very wrong here. And so by grace of God, those of us that can see do see. And I know we're probably not going to get anybody else to see, but to those of my brothers and sisters out there that actually have eyes to see, you're not the only ones that see it. I see it too. And this is very messed up and very wrong. And by grace, we're saved. So we just put our faith in Jesus Christ and know that we're in a war. This, is, this spiritual war has turned physical. And I don't know exactly what we're supposed to do about it, but put our faith in Jesus Christ, which I do. And, uh, and that's it. My brothers and sisters, what we're seeing here is not normal. And um, that's it. I'm just doing this video to confirm that to you. Take the red pill.